Lean on us. We are here for you. You matter. You are not alone. Are you feeling overwhelmed? Not sure where to turn? The National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is there for you. 24-7. Call or text 988 or chat at 988sc.org. Whether you're having an emergency or you know someone who needs support now, they can help you take the next step towards finding hope and healing. There is hope. 988sc.org. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike, the cigarette that's toasted to taste better. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand you get. It's toasted to give you the best taste yet. It's the toasted cigarette. Friends, this is Don Wilson. If you're not getting all the enjoyment you should be getting from your present cigarette, switch to Lucky Strike and see for yourself how much more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment you get from Lucky's better taste. A lucky taste better because it's the cigarette of fine tobacco and it's toasted to taste better. It's toasted is the famous Lucky Strike process that tones up Lucky's fine, naturally good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, find out for yourself. Buy a carton of better-tasting Lucky Strike. <laughs> program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny does another television show, but right now it's radio time. So let's go out to Jack's house in Beverly Hills. As we look in, Rochester, with the help of his best friend Roy, is cleaning up the house after Christmas. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. <laughs> oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. <laughs> now, now, Roy, if you'll get up all the wrapping paper, I'll pick up the ribbons and twine. Okay. Say, Rochester, I noticed that a lot of these boxes that Mr. Benny's gifts came in still have the price tag on them. Oh, those? Those are gifts from the people who work for him. Why do they leave the price tags on them? It saves about six months of argument. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's a box that hasn't been opened yet. I know a lot of people haven't come by to pick up their presents. I'll put it in the pile behind the tree. Okay. Well, careful you don't give it. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, say, Rochester, what's that little package lying on top of the pile? Let's see. Oh, that's Mr. Frank Remley's gift. And uh, what's the big package on the bottom? That's Mr. Remley. <laughs> Why is he gift wrapped? He keeps better that way. <laughs> say, Rochester, what did Mr. Benny get from his neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman? Uh, they gave him that chair over there in the corner. Gee, that doesn't look like much of a gift. The chair looks so dull and drab. I know, but it gets mighty lively when you plug it in. <laughs> you mean... Yeah, that thing hanging over the top ain't no reading lamp. <laughs> Rochester, you're kidding, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought so. Say, Ross, next week is New Year's Eve. You got any plans? Yeah, I got a date with Susie. Say, that reminds me. Susie spoke to me about you the other night. She did? Yeah. She says that you two have been going together so long, she's kind of disappointed that you haven't proposed to her yet. Well, Roy, I've thought about it a lot. and Well, I've been with Mr. Benny so long, I'm a confirmed bachelor. I've picked up too many of his ways. Yeah, but you ought to think about getting married. You know, you're not getting any younger. I'm not getting any older either. That's something else I picked up from Mr. Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I know what you 
to me. Mr. Bennett keeps rolling along like old man River. Say, how old is he really, Rochester? That's something I'll never tell anyone. Well, I know he's not 39. Uh, can't you at least give me a hint about how old he is? Well, all I'll say is, if they do his story on This Is Your Life, it'll have to be an hour program. <laughs> Man, what a spectacular that'll make with Indians and everything. <laughs> ah, good morning, Rochester. Oh, good morning, boy. And Merry Christmas, Roy. Merry Christmas to you, too, Mr. Benny. Uh, would you like some breakfast, boy? No, it's so late and I'm quite hungry. What can you fix me for lunch? Well... I can get you some sliced turkey, cranberry sauce, candied sweet potatoes, turkey dressing, and gravy. Is that what's left over from Christmas dinner? That's what's left over from Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh. uh, do you want me to answer the door, Mr. Benny? No, Roy, I'll go. You help Rochester. Ding dong bell, da dum pum pum dum dum dee dee dee. Merry Christmas, Mr. Benny. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Well, Joey and Stevie, my little beavers, Merry Christmas, boys. Mr. Benny, it is our pleasure, as the duly selected representatives of the Beverly Hills Beavers Club, to come here and present you with a gift for which we all chipped in and bought you as a token of our esteem. Oh, boys, this is very touching. Of all the many nice things that happened to me this Christmas, this is the nicest. Come on in while I open it. Oh, gee, a pair of hairbrushes. <laughs> yeah, isn't that nice? I thought it was stupid, but they voted against me. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, come on in the next room. I have a gift for all the beavers. Gee, oh, thanks. Boy. That's swell. By the way, Mr. Benny, don't forget you promised to come over to the beavers' annual party. We're giving this Friday night. Oh, I'll be there. You know, this year we're going to have girls, and we're going to dance with them and play spin the bottle in post office. Yeah, I bet you can hardly wait. Yeah, I want to see what's so great about it. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> boys, a present from me to the beavers. Guys, a printing press, and what a big one. Boy, the beavers will love this present, because now we can print our own newspaper and bulletins and circulars. Yeah, and maybe next year, we'll even be able to make Christmas cards. Hmm, first Hallmark, now them. <laughs> oh, well, Merry Christmas, boys. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Miss Benny. Benny. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, at our last meeting, we decided to raise the views next year to ten cents a week. Ten cents a week? I thought it was stupid, but they voted against me. <laughs> well, I'm going to use my veto. <laughs> Goodbye, kids. Goodbye. Bye. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. Gosh, those kids are cute. Dum dum dum, the ding dum dum. Say, boss, what's this Christmas package doing up on the mantel? It has no name on it. Let me see it. Oh my goodness, I forgot to deliver it. I better do that right now. Who's it for? Ed, the man who guards my vault. I'll take it to him right now. I'm going down to my vault, Rochester, and I'll be right back if there are any calls for me. out across the bridge over the moat. <laughs> Gosh, look at those alligators. They make wonderful guards. Especially this one right under the bridge. Say, hey, what's that swimming behind her? Oh, my goodness, I must call Luella Parsons. She's had a blessed event. <laughs> 
isn't that cute? Well, I got to get into my vault. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Oh, it's you, Mr. Benny. Yes, it's me, Ed. How nice. Did you come to put some money in the vault or to take some out? Neither, Ed. This is a social visit. It's Christmas. Christmas? Yes, yes. And next week, it'll be New Year's. Gosh, another year has gone by already. That's right, Ed. It'll soon be 1955. 19? <laughs> Yes. Yes, Ed. Now, I just came down to give you your Christmas present. My, this is exciting. May I open it? I wish you would. <laughs> oh, gosh, just what I've always wanted. An umbrella. <laughs> Yes, it'll come in handy in case a pipe ever breaks. <laughs> well, I got to get back, Ed. See you soon. Goodbye. <coughs> Gee, that Ed is always so nice and pleasant. Never complains or anything. I think the next time I come down, I'll lengthen his chain. <laughs> Oh, Rochester, were there any calls for me? No, but while you were down in the vault, Marilyn Merrick, your musical arranger, came in. He's waiting for you in the den. Oh, oh, I'll see what he wants. Oh, hello, Malin. Merry Christmas, Jack. Same to you. Jack, the reason I came over is your producer suggested that we do this tune on the show this week, and I wanted to see if you like it. Let me see the music. Hmm. Well, it's topical. What do you think? I'm not sure. Hum it to me. Da da dum, da da dum, da dum ding da dum. <laughs> you know, Malin, you'd save yourself a lot of trips over here if you'd learned to read music. <laughs> Believe me. Well, I would, but I don't want the boys in the band to think I've gone high hat. <laughs> well, then, well, that reminds me, Malin. I wish you'd tell the boys that from now on. Whenever we do a broadcast, not to bring their friends and have them sit up there with them on the bandstand. Oh, they're not friends. They're parole officers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. See if you can do something about it, will you? Excuse me, Mel. I have to answer the door. Jingle bells, dum dum ding, dum dum. Merry Christmas, Jack. Ah, uh, Merry Christmas, Don. Come on in. Oh, Merry Christmas, Malin. Same to you, Don. Did you get a lot of presents this year? I'll say, I got the greatest collection of wild ties and gaudy sports shirts you've ever seen. <laughs> Gosh, I'll be busy all next week exchanging gifts. Me too. People certainly send you silly things, don't they? Yeah, but they know you very well, like my wife. She's the one person who gave me a useful gift. What'd she give you? A side of beef. <laughs> no. Yes. Don, a whole side of beef? Were you able to get it in your freezer? I don't have a freezer, so I made a sandwich. <laughs> your front lawn must look like an elephant's graveyard. <laughs> oh, say, Jack, uh, uh, here, I brought this over for you. It's a record of a song by Dennis Day. A record? Yeah, I dropped by his house, and he has a cold, and he asked me to bring this over so you could hear it. Gee, I, I hope he feels all right. Oh, you'll be okay. Well, let's hear the song. Put it on the phonograph, Don. Okay. <laughs> hey, Dennis, the cold is worse than I thought. Don, Don, you forgot to wind it up. Now go ahead. Okay. <laughs> 
better. I got a new one. the three of us go over and visit Dennis and cheer him up. Huh? I'd love to, but I've got work to do. I'm just over there, Jack, but I'll walk part of the way back with you. It's on my way home. Okay. I... Shall I answer the phone, boss? No, I'll get it. You just keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, I'm resting. <laughs> hmm. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Joy Trude, the CBS telephone operator. <laughs> oh, is someone trying to reach me around the studio? Yeah. Business. I called to thank you for the lovely Christmas presents you gave me. It was very original. Well, I knew you had earrings and bracelets and beads and a lot of jewelry. So you gave me a jar to keep them in. <laughs> yeah, but first eat the mayonnaise. It's delicious. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Benny, it isn't the gift that counts. It's the sentiment behind it. That's why Mabel and I like you. You treat us like human beings. M most people aren't nice to us at all. Oh, now, wait a minute, Gertrude. You don't go talking like that. No wonder you and Mabel have inferiority complexes. We haven't any complexes. We are inferior. <laughs> And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too, Gertrude. Okay, Don, let's go. Hey, where's Malin? He went out while you were talking on the phone. Oh, well, Rochester, I'll be back in time for dinner. Mr. Benny. Huh? Did you forget to thank Mr. Wilson for the gift he gave you? Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Don, I want to thank you for that lovely sunbeam toaster you gave me. You're welcome, Jack. I was wondering if you needed one. Need one? Before we got that, we used to toast our bread with genuine sunbeams. <laughs> Never mind. Come on, Don. I'll be back in time for dinner, Rochester. Ah, it's such a nice day for this time of year. It certainly is. And I love to walk, especially on a sunny day. You know? Oh, Jack, look at that beautiful bird on your lawn. Ah, <laughs> oh, look, he's hopping over to us. Come on, Bertie. Come here. What's that, Bertie? <laughs> well, what do you know? He said L-S-M-F-T. <laughs> That's right, Bertie. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. 
say, you're a smart bird. <laughs> I'll be darned. Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute, Jack. Wait a minute. I want to try something. Bertie, listen to this. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste yet. It's the toasted <laughs> cigarette. Oh, this is amazing. Look, he's flying away. You think he'll come back again? Only if he needs work. <laughs> That's the only bird I've ever seen with a mustache. <laughs> well, I better hurry over to Dennis Day's house. <laughs> Hey, Mother. <laughs> Gee, Mother, I wish I could get rid of this cold. Well, if you'd only take this medicine, son, it would help you a lot. But I don't like that medicine. Are you sure it's good? Certainly. When I was a working girl, I always used to take it. Did you have a lot of colds then? All the time. I guess that was on account of where you worked. That's right. The only time I ever got any fresh air and sunshine was when John L. Lewis called a strike. <laughs> Mother, I, I don't feel like taking that medicine because, because. Uh, 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 oh. Dennis, let me feel your head and see if you have any temperature. Do I have any? Well, it is a little warm around the point. <laughs> well, I'll probably be up in a day or so. Son, shall I get you another hot water bottle? No, thanks. I already drank three of them, and I don't feel any better. <laughs> You were supposed to put them on your feet. Now she tells me. <laughs> oh, there's someone at the door. Oh, hello, Mrs. Day. Merry Christmas. What do you want? <laughs> well, I, I've come to cheer Dennis up. You couldn't cheer up a laughing hyena. <laughs> well, for your information, Mrs. Day, a laughing hyena doesn't really laugh. What sounds like laughter is just a peculiarity of the hyena's vocal cords. Well, it takes one to know one. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Day, I didn't come over here to... Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> hello, Dennis. How'd you get your cold? Oh, last night I went out all over town singing Christmas carols. <laughs> Gee, Dennis, it's awfully stuffy in here. Shall I open a window? You can't. I nailed them all shut because I walk in my sleep. I didn't know that. Yeah. One night last week, I walked all over town. I finally wound up in the Brown Derby. Boy, was I embarrassed. Well, I should imagine with all those people there and you in your pajamas. Who wears pajamas? <laughs> Gosh, that must have been awful. Yeah, Gus, the manager threw me out because I didn't have a tie on. I don't blame him. Here, Dennis, I brought you some soup. Mrs. Day, that's a hot water bottle. He likes it that way. <laughs> well, I better be going. Goodbye, Dennis. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Oh, by the way, Dennis, you haven't thanked me yet for the Christmas present I gave you. You call that a Christmas gift? Look, Mrs. My Day. My Dennis has been with you over 15 years. And after all that time, you gave him a ticket for a lousy 89-cent car wash. <laughs> Well, tell him to use it on Saturday. It's a dollar and a quarter there. <laughs> anyway, it's not the gift that counts. It's the sentiment behind it. Unless you know about sentiment. You wouldn't give Arthur Godfrey a tea bag if he was stranded on the Mojave Desert with a cup of hot water. <laughs> now, just a minute, Mrs. Day. You listen to me. I I'm a... not listening to anybody. One more word out of you, and I'll put black circles around those baby blue eyes of yours. <laughs> Oh, you will, eh? Hit him, Mom. <laughs> what? Our television set is broken, and I haven't seen a good fight in weeks. <laughs> well, I settled it. I came over here out of the goodness of my heart. I wanted to cheer up Dennis because the poor kid is sick. And all I get out of it is insult. Oh, right in the kisser. <laughs> I'm very fond of Dennis, Mrs. A, and I've been very good to him all these years. And you should be the last one. Ah, shut up! <laughs> that settles it. I'm going 
home. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Jack will be back in a minute to tell you about his television program, which goes on at 7 p.m. tonight over the CBS television network. But first, here's a word for anyone who enjoys a good cigarette. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste. Yes, it's the toasted. Cigarettes, they taste fine. Tobacco is light. Tobacco is mild. Tobacco is too. And it's toasted. Yes, it's toasted. Because the toasting brings the flavor right through. So to get better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste. Yes, it's the toasted. Cigarette. I guess everybody knows Robert Montgomery was, for years, a famous movie star, and now he's a star in television. Matter of fact, his TV show is sponsored by Lucky Strike. He told folks that he didn't have to smoke Luckies for that reason, but he does anyway. Let me give you his own words on the subject. I smoke Luckies and have for years. I like the way they taste. Yep, those are Robert Montgomery's own words, and they sure make a lot of sense. Luckies do taste better. They taste better because L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. And then that fine tobacco is toasted. Yes, it's toasted to taste better. It's toasted. The famous Lucky Strike process tones up Lucky's naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So the very next time you buy cigarettes, friends, be happy. Go Lucky. Make your next garden Lucky Strike. Remember, it's toasted to taste better. Who's there? It's me, Rochester. How's those day? Oh, he's all right. Want me to get you something to eat? No, I don't feel hungry. Gosh, I don't know what to do. I think I'll just sit here and watch television. Turn it on, will you please? Okay. From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program presented by Lucky Strike. Oh, my goodness, that's me. I'm supposed to be on TV in a few seconds. So long, Rochester. Yeah, I don't want to miss any of my show. I'm going to be so good tonight. <laughs> See you in a minute, folks. The Jack Benny Show tonight was written by Milt Josephsberg, John Tackerberry, Hal Goldman, Al Gordon, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Filter smokers, true tobacco taste, real filtration, famous Tariton quality. They're all yours when you smoke filter tip Tariton. Filter tip Tariton gives you all the full, rich taste of Tariton's quality tobacco and real filtration, too. Because filter tip Tariton incorporates activated charcoal, renowned for its unusual powers of selective filtration. Look for the red, white, and blue stripes on the package. They identify filter tip Tariton, the best in filtered smoking. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. place you've gotten lucky lucky in line at the deli i guess aha in my dentist's office more than once actually do i have to say yes you do in the car before my kids pta meeting really yes excuse me what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky i never win and tell well there you have it you could get lucky anywhere playing at luckylandslots.com play for free right now are you feeling lucky no purchase necessary void where prohibited by law 18 plus terms and conditions apply see website for details david's bridal 
where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, smile bravely when it's time to let go, make your dreams come true. The things we do for love, only at David's Bridal.